This is how to wrap a bottle in tissue and cellophane. First of all, place your bottle on a standard sheet of tissue. The bottle needs to be in the middle of the sheet. Make sure with your cellophane nearby, ready to go, that your bottle is in the center of the piece of tissue so that if you lift it up the sides or front and back the bottle will be in the center in both directions. Make any small adjustments that you need to to have the bottle in place. Take some tying ribbon. Have that ready because you'll need it once you've pleated the tissue. Pull the front and back of the tissue up and straighten out the sides a little and then gently, because tissue is quite fragile, pleat up by a gentle upward pulling. Pleat the tissue around the bottle. First a few pleats at the front of the bottle, then a few pleats at the back. And keep going in this way until you've pleated all of the tissue around the side of the item. When you've pleated all of one side, you need to swap hands and in the same way, pleat all of the other side. A few pleats at the front and a few pleats at the back. When all of the tissue is pleated in, then you need to take your tying ribbon, lie the bottle down and carefully tie the tissue in place around the neck of the bottle. This is not too difficult because tissue tends to be quite tame. It doesn't tend to try and escape. This is not the case with the cellophane, which is the next step. Trim off the excess tying ribbon. Then with your roll of cellophane, pull some cellophane from the roll. Pick up your bottle again and lie the neck on the cut edge of the cellophane. The neck where you've tied it with the where you've tied the tissue in place should be right on the cut edge. Stand the bottle up, pull out a little more cellophane, and then lie the bottle down again in the opposite direction and cut the cellophane in line with the neck of the bottle. Cut all the way through. Cellophane is easy to cut. It cuts like butter. Turn the cellophane through 90 degrees so that it's the same orientation as the tissue in the first stage. Then repeat the process of getting the bottle in the center whilst also cutting yourself another piece of tying ribbon. When you're happy that the bottle is central, then you need to repeat the process. Whilst cellophane is more robust than tissue and you can pull harder on the cellophane, don't be tempted to pull too hard as you pleat it. If you do, you'll find that the base of the bottle will slip and you will end up with the bottle, instead of being in the centre of the cellophane, it will slide all the way over to one side and you'll have a very uneven look by the time you finish. When the cellophane is all pleated, lie the bottle down again 
take your tying ribbon and be very careful not to let go of the cellophane. Make sure you get the tying ribbon round and tied and tie a nice tight knot before you let go. Stand your bottle up again. You can readjust the cellophane. Just make sure that it's all fairly evenly pleated, that there are no baggy parts. You can pull them through and then give it a haircut. This gets rid of the four corner defect and you can cut round in a circle, across at an angle, up to a point, whichever you like. I'm just cutting this one round in a circle. Fan the tissue and the cellophane out and then when you've cleared away all the pieces, all you need is a bow to finish it off. This is a pretty wrap, quite a glamorous gift wrap, suitable for something such as a champagne bottle. I'm using a double-sided craft paper, black one side, silver the other. It's folded in half and when I place the bottle on the fold line, the bottle is roughly the height of the folded piece of paper. First of all, with the bottle label up, take the paper over the front of the bottle and move the bottle until the paper just reaches the back of the bottle. It's a bit too far or not far enough. Just adjust it until the paper just tucks around the front of the bottle and reaches the back. At this point, hold the bottle steady with the label up and with your scissors, make a small snip in the paper just above the bottle. Then move your bottle to one side and cut from the left hand margin of the paper on a diagonal across the paper towards the little snip in the top of the paper. Once you've done that, place the bottle back on the paper so that again the top of the bottle lines up with where the snip has been now the top of your diagonal. Take the paper across the front of the bottle and secure it at the back with a piece of sticky tape. Make sure the label is directly facing upwards before you roll the bottle to one side with the paper around it and attach the paper with your tape. Now the paper is attached to the bottle, it is important that the bottle doesn't roll whilst you carry out the next step. Go about 10 or 11 inches along the crease of the paper, the fold line, and take a cut in a curve all the way round up to the top of the paper. Because the paper is double sided and we want to show off the silver side, just cut away about an inch or so of the paper on the side that is face up. If you don't have a double sided paper, you can still do this, just don't cut away this piece. It will still look very pretty. At this point, making sure that everything 
is still lined up, that the base of the bottle and the crease of the paper are still well lined up, the bottle hasn't moved anywhere, start to fold pleats, vertical pleats, concertina pleats into the paper. This will produce a fan effect. You need to keep folding until the pleats reach the side of the bottle, like so. At this point, pull the paper nice and tight around the bottle and take another piece of clear sticky tape and place this over the concertina pleats so that it secures them in place at the side of the bottle. Then stand the bottle up and you can see the fan effect. Then all you need is a bow in a complementary colour that you can stick on the bottle to finish it off. And in much the same way as with other gifts, do just make sure that you put some double sided tape on your bottle and also on your bow. And this is a very smart gift to take to something such as a dinner party or a smart gathering of some sort. Looks very impressive. And you can even pop it in the fridge. This is a shabby chic style wrap. You could adapt this in a number of ways, but I'm just going to use ordinary brown craft paper with some red tissue, some hessian and some brown stitched ribbon. It's red wine, so I've chosen to put red stitch ribbon and red tissue as part of the wrap. Place your bottle on the sheet of paper and ensure that you have enough paper to go around the bottle with maybe an inch or so overlap. There's too much here so I'm just making a fold in the paper where I need to cut it so that I have the right amount. Once the paper has been trimmed, lie the bottle down so that the label is face down because we want the seam to be on the back of the bottle. And at the base of the bottle, the paper needs to be measured about halfway up. But there is a bit of a pit in the base of this bottle. Some bottles are not flat and therefore we need to be sure that perhaps there's a little bit more paper um, rather than just halfway, maybe a little more than halfway, to make sure there's enough to fill in that pit. Check that there's enough paper to go round again and then on one side of the paper make a fold so that there won't be a raw edge of paper and take some double-sided tape and place it on the side of the paper where you folded it. Check again that you've got enough paper at least halfway up the base of the bottle, probably a bit more, to cover the base and then that your seam is going to be in the right place. Peel the backing off your tape and stick that down. Then, to seal the base of the bottle, 
take the underneath layer of paper and pull it towards the centre of the base of the bottle. Take the next adjacent piece of paper and pull that into the centre. And keep going, moving the bottle around as you do until all of the paper has been pleated in to the centre of the base of the bottle. The easiest way to secure this in place is just another piece of clear sticky tape. You can use double sided if you wish, but sticky tape does the job pretty well. Now you have the bottle wrapped in paper with the seam at the back. So to make sure that the seam is closed enough, at this point I would add more sticky tape. I'm just going to cut off the excess paper at the top and then fold the sides in and fold the top over to get rid of the raw edges and this can be stuck with some double sided tape. So the bottle is now sealed within the paper and all that needs to be done now is to decorate it. The important thing with Shabby Chic is that you don't really take too much care over this, that it looks fairly, shall we say, rough and ready. If you wanted to, you could tear strips of tissue rather than, as I have done, fold them. You could have a slightly rougher look. I'm also sticking in place a strip of hessian over the top of the tissue. And finally, with some brown and red stitch ribbon, I'm going to tie this over the two layers of tissue and hessian for the final finish. You can obviously use the principles in this wrap and adapt them to give a different look to different bottles. You can fold the top in different ways, you can crease it, all sorts of things, but basically use the principles of the wrap to gift wrap a bottle. How to gift wrap a jam jar or other jar. I have two pieces of tissue paper here with which to wrap my jar. Tissue is normally rectangular so these have been squared off. This is a technique based on origami so you need two squares of tissue paper in complementary colours. Choose which one you're going to use first and place your jar in the middle and then bring the corners up to meet. As you do this, you'll see that you form four 
pockets at right angles to each other. Bring those into the centre too. So this is another way of pleating tissue around an object. Squeeze the tissue together over the lid of the jar. Take some tying ribbon and tie it securely in place. Cut away the excess tying ribbon and then above the tying ribbon cut away the excess tissue. You will be left with a little nub of tissue which you need to flatten out over the tying ribbon by pressing with your fingers. Take your second piece of tissue and if it has an obvious right or wrong side which usually the gold or silver tissues do place it wrong side up then take another piece of tying ribbon reasonable length because this time in the little notch between the jar and the lid you need to secure this piece of tissue in place. In order to tie a strong knot you may need to lie the whole thing down so that you can keep the knot nice and tight and strong. When this is tied on, repeat the process that you did before. Bring the four corners up, which forms four pockets. Then bring the four pockets in. When all the tissue is pleated in, you then have a couple of options. You could tie and trim the tissue so that it fans out on top or you could tie it with ribbon whatever you want to do to decorate it but what I often do at this stage is to twist the tissue into a rope and then with that rope tie a French knot You can then decorate with ribbon flowers, pine cones, anything wired really, or you can tie ribbon around this. I make a lot of ribbon flowers and so I quite enjoy using these on a jar wrap. The wire on this is a little bit long, so I'm just going to trim that off. and then adjust my flowers so that they're in the position I want them to be. And that's quite a funky little jar wrap. How to gift wrap a cylindrical object. This is a cylinder containing a bottle of port. It has a flat but round end. Something like this can be wrapped quite easily. The paper needs to be enough to go around the cylinder and leave a little extra so that we can fold it over and seam it without a raw edge of paper. At the ends of the cylinder, the paper needs to come halfway up, top and bottom. This is a beautifully soft handmade paper and softer papers are actually much better to use for this type of technique. Fold one edge of the paper so that you can apply some double sided tape to this.
lie the bottle of port on the paper face down so that the right side is not the side that has the seam. Check that the measurement is correct and then peel off the backing on your tape and stick the paper in place. Very carefully, making sure that the item doesn't slide through the tube of paper that you've now made, pull the paper towards the centre of the base of the cylinder. And after each couple of pleats, make sure that you check that the cylinder inside has not slid away from your hand. If it slides, push it back. You can do this in a slightly different way by just folding the paper under roughly on the bottom of the item and then standing it up to pleat the other end. However, I don't like doing this because it often makes the paper at the base of the item look rather messy. When you've pleated all the paper in, you can then take a piece of double-sided tape and tape the last flap of paper in place. This will hold it all nice and securely. Then you can stand your cylinder up. Now this could also be something like a biscuit tin, which is obviously a wider cylinder, but it would work just the same. You can now more clearly see the technique for pleating. Use your finger to gauge the width of the pleats as you go round and to pleat the paper in alongside and note that each time the paper is pulled towards the centre. Keep going around until all of the paper has been pleated and then just tuck the end of your last pleat under and secure it with some double-sided tape. This will be the end upon which you will stick your bow. So don't worry if any of your pleats aren't quite perfect because once you have stuck the bow on top, it will look pretty good anyway. I have a bow ready made here and actually it was more ready than I thought it was. Tape on the bow, tape on the gift. And just secure that in place to finish it off. And it's a very neat way of wrapping a cylindrical object, whether it is a biscuit tin, a bottle of port, a candle or anything else.